In this video, we will look at how to handle partial packets. So we know that when we call send or receive, that we are not guaranteed to send or receive the actual number of bytes that we attempted to send or receive. What we will do to handle this is we can go into our socket header, and we are going to add a new function for receive all and for send all. And the idea will be send all and receive all will keep attempting to send or receive until all of those bytes are sent or received. Due to the nature of how send all and receive all will work, we will not need the bytes sent and bytes received parameter when calling them. Let's go ahead and create their declarations. And let's generate their definitions. First, we will need to store the total number of bytes sent. Then what we will do is we will have a while loop where we attempt to send bytes until we have sent the uh, number of bytes that we initially intended to send. Once we get past the while loop, we will have sent all the bytes, so we will return success. First, we need to calculate the number of bytes remaining to figure out how many bytes to send. We can do that by taking the number of bytes passed in as an argument and subtracting the total number of bytes sent. Next, we will create a p result called result, and we will call send. We will pass in the data, the number of bytes, which would be bytes remaining. And then we need to store the bytes sent. So we'll do bytes sent equals zero. We will pass in bytes sent. Now, there's something about this that is wrong, and that is where we are just passing in data. Think about this, right? Let's look at a really simple example of four bytes. Let's say we try to send the bytes 0, 1, 2, 3. Really simple, we're just sending four individual bytes with the value 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, if we successfully send one byte, then we sent 0. And we still have to send 1, 2, and 3. Well, if we start at the data pointer, we'll start back at zero. But on the second send, we actually want to start at one. So we want to start at the data pointer plus the number of bytes that we have already sent. So we need to calculate the buffer offset. And the way we'll do that is we'll create a char pointer because we know a char is one byte. We'll call this buffer offset. We know we're going to start at the data pointer. We have to cast this to a char pointer. The amount of bytes that we will offset by is however many bytes we have sent. So in this example, after that first attempt to send, we had sent one byte. So we will start at the initial pointer plus one byte, which would start at this correct value for the rest of the data that we need to send. Next, what we'll do is we'll verify that the result was successful, and if not, we will return an error. And if we get down here, if it was successful, then we will increment the total bytes sent by however many bytes we just sent. And that is how our send all will work. So if the first send is successful, then total byte sent should be equal to number of bytes, and the while loop will just iterate the very first time, and then we'll exit out of it, and then return success, and if it takes multiple sends, It'll just keep sending until we have sent the total number of bytes. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to change is we need to change data to buffer offset. And that way we're sending data starting at the buffer offset from where we last stopped. Now let's copy this since our receive all will be formatted pretty much the same way, but of course with receive instead of send. So instead of total bytes sent, we'll have total bytes received. Instead of bytes sent, we will have bytes received. Instead of data, we will have destination. And of course, instead of calling send, we will call receive. And there we go. We have set up our receive all function, just like how the send all was, except we are receiving instead of sending. Now let's just change our server and client to use the send all and receive all functions instead of send and receive. So if we go to the server, we can take out where we're storing bytes received. We no longer need that. 
we will call receive all and we will no longer pass in bytes received and there we go that's set up for the server now let's go to the client and change it from send to send all we no longer need to store the bytes sent so we take out the bytes sent let's rebuild everything and test this out all right and there we go hello world from client attempting to send chunk of data and that all looks right there that concludes this video in the next video we will look at how to send and receive packets of varying size as you can see right now we're only able to send packets that are 256 bytes but what if we wanted to be able to have a dynamic size for the packets.